Hello Horus Heresy fans, welcome to Heresy, the Horus Heresy talk show. In this video, I'm going to tell you about all the different ways in which you can use plastic space marines in your Horus Heresy armies. And as it happens, this is really good timing because a lot of you out there are about to have at least 40 of them from your Age of Darkness box, possibly more. And also Games Workshop are re-releasing the Mark III and Mark IV kits this weekend as well so lots of people me included will be picking up those so in the horus heresy in the age of darkness there are a lot of different things you can do with a basic plastic space marine kit so a lot of these things involve modifying the unit by using special weapons boxes and that kind of stuff that is coming out soon some of those boxes are out this weekend some of them are out very soon for, for extra weapon options but also there are Forge World kits, and lots of us just have lots of bits sitting around the home from lots of years of hobby and Space Marines. So there's lots of things you can very easily do to turn these plastic Space Marine bodies into a whole variety of different units which have got rules in the game. And, you know, what's great about that is not only can you get an army with lots of variety and different bits, but also as well, it makes your army look cool on the tabletop and gives you some interesting hobby stuff to work on too. Now... Not all of the units we're going to talk about are necessarily the absolute best units on the table, but again, something that I'm finding quite a lot with this rule set is they are all good, you will have a good time playing them, you're not going to put any of these things on the table and think, oh, they didn't do anything, I just had to take them straight back off the table again. They're going to be effective units for you, and you and your opponent are going to enjoy playing with them. So, let's have a look at what those units are. We'll start with the tactical squad. Now, if you have bought the Age of Darkness box, you've got access to lots of these guys. And the good news is that they are, you know, pretty playable. For 100 points, you get 10 guys in power armor. Now, killing guys in power armor is not actually that easy in the Horus Heresy anymore. There are some weapons that are very good at it, but for the most part, it takes some investment of firepower to kill space marines because there's not that many things that penetrate their armor. So while they do die relatively quickly they die in you know reasonably fast for their points value so they come with a rule called heart of the legion as well so they get a six plus feel no pain when they're near an objective and that can stack with other sources of feel no pain as well they don't get a lot of equipment really and the equipment that they do get is kind of not worth spending your points on in a lot of ways because unless you just want to equip some of your models with different things for cool factor a lot of the things that you'd spend the points on will actually just not be worth it because the marines will you know will probably die they you know won't last that long if you make them expensive and make them a juicy target people will just shoot them so let's talk about a few ways in which i would recommend you build your tactical squads so firstly as the basic we keep them as cheap as possible you take 10 guys you give the sergeant artificer armor, so you've got a guy with a 2 plus save, and that's it, a 110 point unit, it's got line, so it can hold objectives, maybe this will sit on one of your backfield objectives, you probably don't want to walk it up the board, maybe you'll try and put it in cover for those shrouded saves, and keep it away from assault units, and it's just going to hold an objective and score points for you. If it does get shot, you've got the artificer armor, you can take some extra shots, it'll keep the unit alive a bit longer, and yes, you'll lose a point of leadership on the unit when the sergeant does die, but it's better than just losing all the models in a lot of cases, so, you know, at least you've got uh, some models, which is better than, you know, no models, but an extra point of leadership, so that's one way to use these. You can also use them for other things as well, you can use them for putting them between your enemy's army and your good stuff so if someone's going to come up and try to assault your really expensive units like your heavy support squad that we're going to talk about in a bit they've got to go through your tactical squads first you know so this is what we call screening generally in, in games of warhammer so they can get in the way stop your opponent doing what they want to do while your other units do their work as well so really really good unit one option i am going to throw in is most armies, I would say, if you've got blast weapons in your army, something in your army should have a Nuncio Vox, which lets you re-roll your scatters. For 10 points, it lets any unit on the battlefield re-roll their scatters, basically, which is a really good thing to do. So, a random tactical squad in your army, if you've got one and no other place for a Nuncio Vox, it's probably worth the 10 points just to get one of those into your army. Okay, the second way to use your tactical squad. So this is what I like to call the basic plus. So this is just a bit better 
than your general tactical squad while still being a bit you know quite good for your points so we put an apothecary in the unit which is 45 points now the apothecary because it gives you a five plus feel no pain assuming you're getting shot with weapons that let you take the feel no pain roll which to be fair is most weapons if you're getting shot and you're a space marine it means that your opponent has to put about 50 percent more shots into the unit in order to kill it and the apothecary increases the unit's cost by a little bit under 50 percent so it's it's worth putting it in just for that reason but also it does give you an extra body and it does mean that if your sergeant in his artificer armor dies you've still got another leadership eight model in the unit to keep your squad at leadership eight so if what you're trying to do is just get a cheap but reasonably efficient for its points unit to put on the battlefield which is you know a good way to get some marines on the battlefield without feeling too bad about the fact that they may be a little bit dull this is a good way to do it and it's 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 point efficient but what's also good you can also do on top of that as well is get your heart of the legion saved so if you get on an objective and you've got that apothecary that apothecary is now giving you a four plus feel no pain and all of a sudden your unit of space marines is actually very hard to kill for its points now a lot of armies you know we all want to take the cool toys we all want to do a lot of that kind of stuff in our army but in a lot of missions there's an objective in your deployment zone and something's got to sit on that objective to score you the points. And this unit, the basic plus 10 space marines with an apothecary, is a great way to just make sure you've got something to sit on your home objective as well. And it adds more space marines to your army, which is always a thing we're trying to do to make our armies look cool while we're busy putting all sorts of vehicles and dreadnoughts in them as well. So that's another good, good way to do it. You can also step this one up. I think in you know in a, in a similar in concept is by keeping the unit cheap not putting too many toys in it but you can also just increase this all the way up to 20 guys and you get the same effect you put them on a home objective they're very difficult to shift and that apothecary when you're at 20 men becomes even more of a good investment because now you've got a whole lot of things your opponent's got to chew through and, and realistically to chew through those things requires a real investment of firepower. So even though that tactical squad might not do much other than shoot bolters, although 20 bolters are three shots each with Fury of the Legion is still quite a lot of bolters. But even if that's all they're going to do, just the amount of firepower they will eat up is worth it. You know, And it's a very Space Marine thing to do is to sit around on an objective with your power armor whilst the enemy army shoots at you and you just kind of stand there unrelenting and don't die. That's very like cinematic as well. So... I think that's the thing you can do. Up that all the way to 20 models or somewhere in between, depending on your points or how many men you feel like painting, is also a great thing you can do at the box. I do think you can potentially add bayonets to that unit as well because at 20 models, one of the downsides is your opponent can try to just win a combat, a melee combat with the unit and force it to fall back and possibly just destroy the whole unit in a sweep and advance and that becomes a bit of a problem when you've got more points invested into the unit so a way to counter that you could give it some bayonets you could give it chain bayonets you know depending on how many points you want to spend to make it better less likely to lose a combat and you could also potentially put a legion vexler on it as well for plus one to your combat result but you're starting to get expensive at that point and all of a sudden sitting around on an objective if your opponent's not charging your unit if it's just shooting your unit you're wasting more points if those guys aren't getting into combat so some decisions to make there but also as well you might find that the decision to put those bayonets chain bayonets etc onto that unit for you is more driven by what they look like and the chain bayonet space marines do look super cool as well so do the normal bayonet space marines actually so if you do choose to kit your 20-man unit out with some bayonets, it's certainly not wrong. It's a good unit on the tabletop. You're going to enjoy it. It's going to play well. If you've got that apothecary, it's going to be hard to shift. So the last way in which I would potentially use those marines is all out. And I don't remember a time in Warhammer history when going all out on tactical marines was ever a good idea. But I think in Horus Heresy, it actually kind of works. So you take a big unit again, much like the basic plus 20 men, you definitely do give them the chain bayonets, you give them the apothecary, you also give them the legion vexilla, and you also give them, make sure they've got melter bombs in that unit as well, I think is also a good buy at that point. That is, if you put all those things in that unit, that's 305 points. So it does become 
quite good in combat just by volume of attacks although you really do want to make sure you're charging with this unit to get the you know you're effectively doubling your attacks when you charge and you're really putting a lot of attacks into the enemies at that point which you know is is actually pretty good now this is quite an expensive unit still though right so if you're playing an army where your army bonus or what you've got in your army doesn't really benefit these guys it's probably a little bit too much to invest so many points into them but there are a lot of legions that really work with a unit like this so if you play raven guard for example these guys will get the falcons rule which will let them infiltrate which gets them closer to fighting or if you're playing thousand suns you could give them pyri which gives them all hammer of wrath you could give them plus three movement and ignore difficult terrain which will get them up there faster if they're blood angels they're going to be plus one to wound at which point you might not even need the chain bayonets you just take normal bayonets and you'll be strength six so there's lots of ways in which the legion traits can work with these to actually make them worth investing their points into or you know you could just be playing iron hands where people are you know makes it harder to shoot them which means that they're more likely to get there. Or Sons of Horus, obviously the enemy's going to be at minus one strength when they fight you as well. So there's loads of things that all start to stack up to turn that into an actual effective unit. You can also give them, at this point you've invested enough points that they might be worth a console in the unit. And my favourite potentially for making this unit good could be the Chaplain. So the Chaplain's going to give them Hatred, which means if they've got Chain Bayonets, they are rerolling all the hits and all the wounds, and all of a sudden they're putting through an awful lot of attacks, and even Terminators are going to take quite a lot of damage off them because they're going to go first against the Terminators because Terminators tend to have a lot of initiative one weapons, and you're going to put a lot of damage downrange just by volume of attacks as well. The Chaplain also makes them Leadership 10, so less likely to run away with this big unit as well so lots of cool stuff you can do with tactical marines all the way from just 10 guys sitting on an objective all the way up to kitting them out and having them run around the battlefield and you know you could build two of that unit from the age of darkness box and have two huge units run around the battlefield like fully kitted out which is kind of cool don't forget as well you do get power weapons in those new space marine kits which is cool as well you've got lightning claws you've got power swords you've got power fists that you can put on the sergeant potentially as well so there's loads of ways in which you can you know make those units actually good in combat tactical marines good in 2022 who knew right next option is going to be the tactical support squad so the tactical support squad are basically slightly more expensive space marines but they are allowed to take special weapons and every guy in the unit has to have the same special weapon because that's how space marines were organized during the horus heresy so 85 points for five guys that makes them 17 points each compared to 10 for a tactical squad so that's a big jump and they don't get any extra bonuses for that they just get the ability to take guns so they don't get heart of the legion either so they lose that obviously they don't get an extra shot with bolters because they're not using bolters and they're not lying so they can't hold objectives so you're really taking these for exactly what they sound like you're taking them for the tactical support for the guns now these are very cool and the box set that's coming out with the guns in this weekend has got a lot of different gun options in which is really great to see but their guns are kind of expensive so plasma guns are 10 points each melter guns are 15 points each and the problem with that is it makes these guys a really juicy target to shoot at. You know, when the guys are worth sort of like 25, 35 points each, your opponent's really just going to want to shoot them. And special weapons tend to be sort of medium ranged to short ranged even. You know, plasma guns, you want to be within 12 for your rapid fire. So really, these guys need a way to get there. Now, that might just be a rhino is the obvious simple way to get them there. But if you're playing something like a drop pod assault or a subterranean assault, something like that, that's also another way to deliver these. So a bunch of guys dropping with melter guns is obviously a very classic Warhammer tactic. Drop with melter guns, blow up a bunch of tanks or dreadnoughts or something like that. Same with plasma guns. Bunch of guys with plasma guns drop down. Really good at shooting space marines or terminators. But they are very expensive and do expect them to get shot really quickly if you stick them in the middle of your opponent's army so either way this might not be the best option in the world because of the expense and particularly if you haven't got access to all those drop pods and, and termites you probably have got access to rhinos they're quite common you might want to either 
steer clear of these guys or you know not just do too much with them because this is one of the ways you put these on the table your opponent shoots up, shoots them all off and suddenly you're not having a fun game anymore because all your toys are gone so maybe just limit yourself to these just for some army variety or you know skip them all together in favor of the next unit we're going to talk about which is the heavy support squad now by contrast these are great these are 100 points and for that you get five guys and they've all got to have the same heavy weapon the difference in these and the tactical support squads is that the heavy weapons are like cheap they're actually cheaper or the same as as the special weapons so quite a few of these are really good as well so for 10 points you get a las cannon so that's 150 points for a unit with five las cannons great plasma cannon 10 points as well 150 points five plasma cannons great at killing space marines as an example, particularly good at killing bunches of 20 Space Marines if someone's been listening to my 20 Space Marine Tactical Squad advice. 125 points buys you five Volkite Culverins. Now, these are very, very good. These are multi-shot Strength 6 weapons. This unit's putting out 30 Strength 6 shots with Deflagrate. That will kill a lot of Space Marines on volume of fire. They're only AP5, so you get your save against them. But they just do put so many shots out on the wound on twos. And that definitely great rule as well. Although it's not very good, because you've got to actually... People have got to fail a save before you get your extra wound rolls. It will add an extra few in as well. And missile launchers are pretty good as well. 125 points. Now... Unlike LAS cannons, which can be turned on Terminators nice and easily, so can plasma cannons. Crack missiles are less good because they can't hurt Terminators. So these are, you know, you can kill Space Marines with them, or it's a bit of a slow way to kill a bunch of Space Marines. And you can kill vehicles with them, although, again, you sort of might as well have a LAS cannon at that point, really. So what, what missile launchers do do, though, is give you lots of flexibility. So crack missiles are flexible. This has always been the case in Warhammer. Frag missiles come with pinning. So... Although there's no modifiers to that pin, and if you're playing an army that does modify leadership in some other way, you might have opportunities to shoot these and, and pin enemy units. Also, maybe good in the future when we've got some nice softer targets to kill that aren't Space Marines, like lots of Imperial Guard run around potentially. Also as well, they do come with flak missiles, so if your army doesn't have a way of shooting flyers, that's also a nice thing to have access to. So four different heavy weapons there, all really good. Now what's it interesting about these units is that you can make them bigger and you can take them all the way up to 10 models and what's great about doing this is the return fire reaction so if someone wants to shoot your let's say 10 space marines with las cannons they're going to take 10 las cannons in the face to do that and even if they kill your unit you've had a chance to kill theirs and certainly made them pay for it as well so the bigger the unit gets you know the better also, interesting thing you can do with these, you could put an Armistos in the unit as well, which gives them a Cognus Signum, which means that he can give them all plus one ballistic skill, and it gives you um, uh, nine leadership as well, which is good for making sure your heavy weapons stay on the table when they do start taking casualties. Also, a good thing to have either in the unit or nearby could be a Librarian with Telekinesis to give them a four plus invulnerable save to make sure that they've you know, got something to actually keep them alive when they are getting shot as well. So plenty of things that you could use with these units to make them better. I would advise taking the augury scanner upgrade on these units as well, particularly if you make them bigger. The interceptor reaction is really good, and this gives you one for free. So, you know, people turn up with their drop pods or whatever. Again, 10 las cannons, 10 volkite culverins in the face of one of their units, you know, is, is really great. Lovely interactive play you know, on your opponent's turn. Blow their units up as they turn up. That's what we like. Heavy support squad's great. All these weapons will be out soon. Some of them are already out on Forge World, depending on what marks you're using. Very easy to get access to these guys and get lots of guns into your army, which is cool. The next thing we can do is we can make veteran squads. So veteran squads really are just normal Marines who've like maybe seen some stuff more than other Marines have. And because they've seen some stuff, they've got weapon skill 5 and 2 wounds and 2 attacks each. So these are 115 points. They've got the same number of wounds as a tactical squad, but obviously if you're getting hit by things with instant death, you're losing two wounds at a time, which is the downside. But they do have more weapon options. Now, because they come with weapon skill 5, and you sort of want to give these guys melee weapons in a lot of ways because they don't they don't come with that many guns to make them a good shooting squad necessarily so they can take things like volkite serpentures and stuff like that they can take one heavy or special weapon in the squad 
but it's not really playing to the squad's strengths, which is that weapon skill 5. So I think the best thing to do with these, and something that does look really cool as well, is to make them into a into a combat squad, uh, a melee squad, I should say, not a combat squad. So they can have power weapons, and they've got access to all sorts of different power weapons. So you can give them power mauls, or lightning claws, which are both really good at killing space marines. So you can make these a space marine hunting squad. Power mauls and lightning claws. You can also give them charnable weapons as well, which could be a glaive or a saber, I would say, because they've both got breach in five. So that would mean that these guys are kind of squishy in combat because they're just marines with a three plus save. If you've got those charnable weapons, it'll mean you'll go first against most people and have a chance to kill some guys before they can attack back. And they've also got Breach in 5, which means that you can hurt Terminators, although I'm, I don't think I'd really want them to be in a fight with Terminators, you know, because the Terminators are superior in save and are likely to have weapon skill 5 themselves a lot of the time. But you get a unit of 5 of these guys kitted out with some basic power weapons for, you know, 115 points plus 5 points each for the weapons. It's only 140 points, and the 5 of them will be really good are cleaving their way through units of units of marines without taking too much back in return because of the superior weapon skill. You certainly are going to want the artificer having on the sergeant as well because there's a good chance you might end up in challenges or maybe if you're fighting an enemy unit that's got like one power sword on the sergeant, you might want to challenge that sergeant yourself, kill him, beat him with your 2 plus save and make sure that he doesn't chop up a bunch of your marines as well. So again, not a super powerful unit, this but certainly a unit that adds variety to your army looks cool on the tabletop gives you some good modeling opportunities to make them you know give them an assortment of power weapons maybe give them some uh decoration on their armor paint them a little bit differently that kind of stuff you will want to deliver these somehow so again if you're playing an army that's got a way to make that happen like thousand sons or raven guard that will be a good thing or you can put them in a rhino for example which will make it easier to get them there but you know, the point of is, this is another way you can use those plastic space marines just with simple upgrades you've got. Again, if you're using the Mark VI kit, you could just use a bunch of the lightning claws and power swords from the Mark VI kit and give these guys a slightly different paint job. And hey, presto, units of veterans, really cool. In a similar vein to the veterans, we've also got the command squad. So the command squad is a small HQ unit. You get three models. One of them is a standard bearer. And they can be taken as a retinue for a character without using up a HQ slot. So they're very similar to veterans, but they come with this standard. Now, the standard's really good because, number one, it gives all your Space Marines leadership 10 within six inches. Absolutely fantastic ability. You know, I talk about leadership a lot on these uh, on these videos, and that's just a, a way to do that. But also, it makes the unit that they're in, so this command unit line as well, so it can hold an objective. And these guys aren't even very expensive. You know, they're only really the price of three veterans. So, you know, you bring these with your character, it turns them into a combat effective unit as well because these guys can similarly to veterans have power weapons. They can also have board and shields, which makes them a bit tougher as well. Now, that might not be a thing that's quite as easy to come by, but, you know, you might have some shields in your collection somewhere. You might want to do something cool with some third-party bits. You can give them those. They can also take power fists as well, which the veterans can't. So you can get yourself a command squad for not many points, and that gives you an objective holding unit that can make a lot of your nearby Marines leadership 10 you know, maybe your heavy support squad's nearby and now it's leadership 10, it's much harder to pin, all that kind of stuff, as well as giving you another combat effective unit. You know, it doesn't cost you many points and you can also make the unit bigger as well. So if you just want a nice elite unit of weapon skill 5 guys sitting at the heart of your army, escorting one of your characters, this is another great thing to do with the Mark 6 Marines and again, lots of conversion opportunities, opportunities to do something interesting with the models. So last but not least is the Recon Squad. Now, unlike Scouts, the Recon Squad is a unit of Space Marines, fully in power armor, trained to operate behind enemy lines. And these are obvious, another very easy conversion. You don't even need to convert these, much like the veterans in the Command Squad. Technically, just give them a little bit of a different paint job to differentiate them. But, you know, 
they suit Mark VI quite thematically because Mark VI was a more variety, maneuverable variety of armor. So you know it worked really well with the with the beaky marines from the box. I'm going to be doing them in Mark III personally because I'm playing Iron Hands and I like my Mark III. But they're an easy conversion. You, know, you can green stuff on a cloak. You can do pretty much anything you want to differentiate these guys. Now, what I really like about these and why I think they're a really good choice for your army is because they get access to Nemesis Bolters. They're also Line, and they're also Scout and Infiltrate. So they really do a lot of different things, really. So let's talk about the Nemesis Bolter variation. So five of these with Nemesis Bolters is going to cost you 135 points. They've got Shroud Bombs, which add six inches to the range of people trying to shoot you, and Nemesis Bolters have got a 72-inch range because they're sniper weapons. So you can sit these really far at the back of the battlefield. Your opponent will struggle to hit them, with things like bolters you know you don't really want to put big guns into units like this you want to shoot them with your bolters and stuff your opponent will struggle to hit them because they're so far away plus them shroud bombs and they can just sit in cover picking off sergeants picking off apothecaries with their averages on their dice on average they if five of them shoot they will kill a one wound model in the unit so they can easily pick off an apothecary every turn and rarely mess with your opponent's plans they can also pick off, you know, sergeants with artificer armor to try and get them out of units before you shoot the unit with a bolter, reduces their leadership, all these different things. You could also give them an augury scanner, which is, again, the free interceptor reaction. And you can imagine your opponent turns up with a bunch of guys, they jump out of a drop pod, you get a free interceptor shot, shoot those guys and pin them. And all of a sudden your opponent's just dropped a unit in front of your army and now it's been pinned by your snipers and then you shoot it in your own turn. That's also cool. This uh, this unit could also carry the Nuncio Vox for your army that I mentioned before. If it's going to be hard to shoot this unit and you're going to probably set it up in a vantage point somewhere for its snipers, maybe on a ruin or a building or something like that, this could carry the Nuncio Vox if you've got a blast in your army as well. Now, that's quite a lot of stuff for 150 points. And I think also from a variety in your army point of view, which keeps your army interesting, this is a really good thing to have in your army. And it gives you, again more opportunities to convert more of those plastic space marines into something other than a tactical squad the other thing you can do with these i'm going to mention it because i because i think it's cool and i think it's an interesting thing to do is you could flank them so because they've got infiltrate they automatically get outflank if you keep them in reserve so they can outflank the whole unit can be given melter bombs for five points which is an interesting thing melter bombs normally just come on a sergeant and he just gets one attack with the melter bomb this whole unit can get it so for 85 points plus 5 for the Melter Bombs, you can have an outflanking unit. You could give them Astarte shotguns if you wanted to. So they've got assault weapons. They're free on this unit. And what you can do is you can outflank them. When they turn up from outflank, they cause pin and test. That's a standard outflanking rule, which is like a nice throw-in thing. And potentially they could charge a tank and, you know, they could stick 5 Melter Bombs on it. And there's not a lot of tanks are going to do very well after being charged with five melter bombs and don't forget they're also a line unit as well and an outflank and line unit while some armies may have ways to do similar things to that most most marine armies don't so having an outflanking unit that can come on at the side and score is really good so you could increase the unit to 10 men which is only 140 points 145 with the melter bombs and you've got 10 guys who can flank and go and steal an opponent's objective if they're not dealt with and that's a very cheap point to pay to do that and if those 10 guys have also got melter bombs which again is just five points any tank in the vicinity is going to be very very scared of what they're going to do so super interesting uh, super interesting unit highly recommend putting a little bit of conversion paint job work into these to get yourself some variety and also some variety on the battlefield in what your units do as well so that's the end of the episode i hope that's given you lots to think about in terms of the way of building your plastic space marines in terms of some opportunities to do some conversions and do some work on them while also making sure you've got lots of different cool units to do things in your army to do things on the table and make your force very effective at the same time if you enjoy the content please do drop me a like and a subscribe and i would love it if you would drop me a comment if there's anything that you would like to discuss in this episode or if you'd like to leave me any feedback